welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm doing a cute little mushroom illustration and in this video I'm going to be talking about a specific art topic like I will be doing every Friday but I just wanted to say that normally on Fridays these pieces are going to be a lot fuller and a lot bigger and have a lot more time put into them so this is just a really quick illustration because before I did this one I tried to do two other original pieces and both of them failed really badly so I thought that today's art topic would be really good to talk about what happens if your art doesn't turn out the way you planned it to or not the way you thought it would in your mind or it just looks bad. What do you do? Do you keep it? Do you carry on working on it? Do you leave it and come back to it? Or do you just call it a day and throw it away? So I'm going to be giving you some of my own examples and talking through what went wrong with the two pieces that I did before this one. So the first one that I did was a really cute girl and she was meant to be autumn themed with twigs in her hair and autumny leaves and I really liked the idea and the concept that I came up with but the first problem that I had was that I didn't do the sketch very well. Some of the anatomy was really off so her chin was too small and her neck was a bit too long and I didn't really pick up on this because I rushed straight into the colouring process and the colouring looked good for about halfway through until I did the hair and it just become apparent to me that everything was really off in the chin region so the jawline was just really off but I'd already used markers and pastels and I'd inked it in that I couldn't I couldn't fix it or remove it or anything like that because I used black fine liner for it and it just wasn't going to work and the second thing that went wrong is that I really didn't plan the colours so it looked good until I did the hair and I did it too dark so the face looked really washed out but I couldn't remove it because I'd already inked everything in and I couldn't change it so the key from that was that I learnt for the next piece that I needed to make sure that I did a really accurate sketch and check it over and make sure I'm fully happy with it and that I do some sort of planning with the colours so that when I go into the piece I know where the colours are going to go so then I moved on to the second piece and I decided to call a day on the first one. So for the second one I decided to do two mushrooms and do a butterfly on one of them with a really night kind of feel to it and I was using all new materials so I recently ordered some sanded paper, some powder blender for coloured pencils and some fixatives and stuff like that. And I wasn't expecting this to be a masterpiece, I know I was using all new materials, I wasn't going to be arrogant enough to think that I was going to be able to create anything amazing, but it turned out so awful that it just wasn't showable, it looked awful like a two year old had done it. Even though I used these products as they said and I'd watched videos on them, I still wasn't comfortable enough with them that I knew really how to use them and it was going to take some time to get used to it. But the problem that I had was that even though it said I could apply multiple layers, by the time I got to the third layer of applying this powder blender and fixative, the layers were just coming off as I was adding new layers and it just wasn't working. So that was the point where, you know, if you want to do masterpieces, don't do them with things that you haven't had enough practice with. Masterpieces are meant to be one of your final things. Most of your drawings should be learning tools. So... That drawing should never have been something that I was planning to do for this Friday's video as an original artwork and that was my mistake so I should have done lots of practice before I just tried to jump in. So make sure if you've bought any new materials that you really do a lot of practice before you commit to doing a full artwork with them. Do lots of little test pieces and testers on little scrap piece of paper before you commit to a full artwork and a full concept on that. So then I came to the decision, do I try and keep wasting lots of materials and product trying to fix this and potentially waste more time? At this point it was yesterday evening, so it was Thursday night and I knew I had to do a video for Friday. So do I waste lots of time trying to correct it or do I just move on and go with something else? And I tried for about another hour to try and fix it, but it just wasn't getting any better. And all it did was just frustrate me, so I decided to move on. So from those experiences I thought it would be a really good thing to talk about um, how to deal with something if it doesn't look really good or if it's not what you expected it to be and whether you should just keep working on it or just move on. So in those cases it really wasn't worth me carrying on with them firstly because I knew on the first piece that I didn't have enough tooth left of the paper to carry on adding lots of layers to fix it so I think if it's a problem with your technique where you've damaged the tooth too early on I would kind of just put that aside and try something else because once you've damaged the tooth of the paper it's really hard to fix that unless you're doing paintings or something like that where you can just wait for the layer to dry and then carry on on top of it but if it's colored pencil once you've damaged the tooth of the paper it's really hard to kind of go over that and correct it 
So I would use your own kind of opinion there of whether you think it would be worth going over and keep trying to improve it. But the next example that I have is one of my recent watercolour paintings which was Illustrious Death and for about three quarters of the way through that painting I absolutely hated it, I didn't know if it was going to turn out very good and I just didn't know whether to carry on or scrap it. But I decided to carry on and it actually turned out to be one of the best pieces in my opinion, it was one of my favourite pieces that I'd ever done. So yeah, sometimes you have to kind of use a bit of your own initiative, sometimes it will work out and it will correct itself, but if you haven't like damaged the tooth of the paper then it's worth carrying on to try and fix it, at least for a couple more hours and then if you can't, I'll just move on or come back to it another day once you've like had a bit more rest and you think that you can give it another kind of tackle and face it head on again but I would try as much as you can to try and finish a piece even if it's not one of your favourites or ones that you're most happy with I'd at least try and finish it so that you have something to show for your mistakes something to show and you can look back at it and think okay you know this piece was a good learning tool because not all your drawings are going to be masterpieces some of them are going to be things that you're going to learn from and it's really important that you don't just forget about them you've got to learn from the mistakes and the things that stopped you from finishing that piece to the standard that you wanted so some advice that I have to stop you having problems when it comes to your drawings is to make sure that you start off with a really good sketch. So your sketch is the foundation that you're going to build your creation around and it's really important that you make sure that your sketch is as accurate as it can possibly be. Especially if you're drawing a person and you're drawing the features, it's really important that you get those features in the correct place and all the anatomy correct because when it comes to colouring and painting it's really going to highlight any flaws that you have with your sketch. And I know it's really easy to just want to jump into the colouring or the painting process and normally the sketching isn't the most interesting part but it's really important and it'll really make your life a lot easier if you have a really accurate sketch and then you can build upon that and it's going to make sure that you have a lot less problems when it comes to doing the rendering. The next thing is to make sure that you have a general composition and colour scheme for your piece. So you don't have to know where every little colour is going to be, but have a general thought of the colour of the hair for example, and the lips, and the background so that you know what the contrast is going to be like, and where the lighting is coming from and all that sort of stuff. And it's really important that you spend a lot of time thinking as well about the composition. So where each piece is going to go, what's your focal point of the piece, what you want everyone to be looking at and what else can fade into the background so it's really important that you kind of spend a lot of time to think about how you're going to make the piece as appealing to the viewers as possible and how you're going to place your colours in there because if you've got as much planned as possible when you go into your colouring or painting process if you know what your colours should be if you've got an accurate sketch and you know where the composition of everything should go you're going to have much less chance of making any problems and not being happy with your piece because you've already really thought about it. And another thing that's important to think about is the techniques that you're going to use to render each piece of your painting or drawing. So think about what technique would be best to blend the skin and what technique would be best to do the background and think about all this before you go into it rather than just jumping in because this will save you a lot of time having to fix things. Even if it is boring and takes a bit more time at the start to plan all these things, it will really save you a lot of time when it comes to actually doing the piece. So the last thing that I want to quickly mention is just the emotions behind having a piece that you're really excited about just not turn out the way you want it to. It can be really disheartening, especially if you're really excited about a concept, but make sure that it doesn't get you disheartened and make you want to stop creating art, because that's not okay and that's not a good way to think. Take it all as experiences. It doesn't mean that you have to give up on your concept, you can always recreate it, try it again, but just learn from the mistakes that you made and try not to get frustrated and angry. If it gets to the point where you're just upset and you want to cry, Make sure that you take a step back, go and relax and then come back to it and always have a positive outlook. There'll be a lot of times where it'll be hard to do this but just really talk to yourself and motivate yourself. If you just give up then you're definitely not going to get better but if you look at your weaknesses and tackle them and study more then you're definitely going to improve and it'll really help. And then in a few years time you can look back at these pieces and see how far you've come and you always want to keep the pieces just to look back and see the progress that you've made because if you're just going to stay the same throughout your whole art career 
then it's not as enjoyable. You want to see the progress that you've made. And that's one of the fun things about an artist, is getting to see where you've come and actually see the physical progress that you've made. So anyway guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat useful. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!